dark web. For some people, that phrase brings up images of hackers and hoodies or illegal marketplaces. But that's just one small corner of it. Dark web is simply a hidden part of the internet. It doesn't show up in Google results and you cannot access it with regular browsers. But most people don't really know how to access it safely. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get to the dark web safely and what are some things you can do to protect your privacy while you're there. Let's quickly break down what it actually is and how it's different from the rest of the internet. So the internet as we know it actually has layers, three layers to be specific surface web, deep web, and the dark web. The surface web is the regular stuff like Instagram, YouTube, and Reddit. These are all indexed and searchable with Google or any other traditional search engine. The deep web is anything behind a login screen. You can think of your Gmail inbox, your cloud storage, academic databases, private records, stuff that you can't just stumble onto. And then we have the dark web, which is a hidden section of the internet that doesn't use typical domain names names like .com, instead it uses .onion domains and you can only access them using special tools, mainly the Tor browser, which we will get into in a bit. Contrary to popular opinion, the dark web isn't all about illegal stuff. Just like the surface web, it's a mix. It depends where you go and what you do. Alright, now that you understand what the dark web actually is and that it runs on .onion addresses, we can talk about how to actually get there. To do that, you need access to the Tor network. You can think of the Tor network as a giant privacy tunnel system across the internet. And to access this privacy tunnel system, we will need a tool called Tor Browser. The easiest and the simplest way to use Tor Browser is to install it on your main system. Simply open your regular browser like Chrome, Firefox, Edge, whatever you're using and head over to torproject.org slash download. Once you're on the site, you'll see a list of supported systems. For this video, I'm going to pick Windows, but if you're on Mac or Linux, just choose your operating system. Just click the download button that matches your system and let it run. Once the file finishes downloading, open it up. If you're on Windows like me, you'll get the standard installation wizard and you just need to choose your language, choose where you want to install it, and finally click install and let it do its thing. Once that's done, you can go ahead and launch the Tor browser. The very first time you open it, Tor will ask you how you want to connect. You will see a screen that says something like this. In most situations, you can just click connect and it will start building a circuit to the Tor network. Keep in mind that if you live in a country where Tor is blocked, like China or Iran, you might need to click configure and set up a bridge. Once Tor connects, it will open up like a regular browser. But we want to verify that the connection is actually going through the Tor network. So in the address bar, type check.torproject.org and then hit enter. You'll see a message that says something like this, along with an IP address that is part of the Tor network. This means you're good to go and all your browsing is now routed through Tor. So now you've got Tor browser installed, you're connected to the Tor network and your traffic is being routed through a secure anonymized circuit. If you're just looking around, checking out onion links, reading forums, or doing basic research, using Tor browser on your regular system is totally fine. It still gives you a solid layer of privacy as long as you're careful. But here's the thing, and this is really important. Even though Tor hides your internet traffic, your operating system can still leak identifying information like metadata, cached files, browser history, or background services that can log activity. All that stuff can leave a footprint on your machine without you even realizing it. And that footprint can eventually be tied back to you. So if you're curious about staying anonymous, then and using something like Tails OS is going to be the next step. Now, Tails is a live operating system you boot from a USB stick. It routes everything through Tor by default, it leaves no trace on the machine you're using, and it's read only. So, even if you plug it into a malware infected computer, you can still safely run Tails. To install Tails, you need to open up a browser and go to tails.net. Once you're there, click the Install Tails button. This will take you to a step-by-step -step guide. Before you start, it will tell you what you need and if you match these requirements, simply click Download Tails. 
this will start downloading the Tails image file and it might take a few minutes depending on your connection. Once you install the image file, you will have to burn it into your USB stick. Here, I'm going to use Bellina Etcher to do that, but you can use any other tool of your choice to burn the image. If you don't have Bellina Etcher tool, you can download it by visiting bellina.io slash etcher and download the right version for your operating system. Once you install this tool, simply run it and then you will see a window that looks like this. So here, simply click flash from file and select the tails image file you just downloaded earlier. Next, plug in your USB stick, then click select target and choose it from the list. And finally, click flash to burn the image into the USB stick. Keep in mind that anything on the USB stick will be wiped, so if you have anything important on it, make sure to save it somewhere safe. This process usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes, but once it's done, you can safely remove the USB stick. Alright, now everything is ready. We want to simply run tails we just burned on the USB stick. And to do this, you need to shut down your computer completely and make sure the USB stick is plugged in and then turn your computer back on and enter the boot menu. And to get on the boot menu, on most computers you will press a key like F12, F9, escape or delete during startup. You might see a prompt like press for boot options or BIOS, so try to hit that key fast. Depending on your system, it will look different, but the general idea is to change the boot order and make sure the USB with the tails is the first one to boot into instead of your main hard drive. If everything goes right, you'll see the tails boot screen pop up. You can simply choose the default options and then hit start tails. Give it some time to load and then choose your connection type to Tor network. After all this, you will now have a fully anonymous privacy focused environment. Everything you do here is going to be routed through Tor, leaves no trace on your computer, and resets after every shutdown. You can now browse Onion sites with real operational security without your main operating system tracking anything in the background. Alright, we're almost there. We've set up everything, Tails OS is running, we know that all traffic is going through the Tor network, and most importantly, we know that everything will be wiped clean the moment we shut down the system. But we still want to increase our protection a little bit more. And and the reason is that the dark web is a place where privacy and protection matter, not just from the sites you visit, but from any possible fingerprinting, leaks or malware that you come across. So even though Tails gives us a solid foundation, we still want to harden the browser a little bit more. By default, Tor browser is set to a balanced level of security, which tries to give you full functionality without sacrificing too much. But you can safely push this higher, and to do this, you can simply click the shield icon and then click settings and then here you will see three options standard safer and safest for most users i recommend going with safer which gives you extra protection without completely breaking every website but if you're going deep into more sensitive or dangerous pages then you probably need to switch it to the safest this will make sites look a bit broken but the trade-off is going to be worth it all right now we're actually ready to start browsing the dark web safely but here comes the obvious question, where do you even find these onion sites? The thing is, onion sites are not indexed like regular websites. You won't find them by just googling around, which is kind of the whole point. They're intentionally hidden from the surface web. Most users rely on a few common and relatively safe methods. Some of these methods include Amia, which is a search engine for onion sites. It filters out illegal content and is often used by researchers and journalists. And finally, r slash onion subreddit, which can be a gold mine for lesser known but trusted services. Just make sure you're not blindly visiting links from random users. Always verify onion addresses because they're long and random for a reason and it's super easy to get tricked by lookalike or phishing clones. While visiting links on dark web, do not give out real names, real emails or any identifying information. Do not download files unless you trust the source and do not use Tor to log into your personal accounts. So that's it and you now have the tools to browse the dark web safely and privately. The dark web itself is not illegal, just like the surface web, it all depends on what you do while you're there. So be smart, be cautious and don't get reckless just because you're behind Tor or inside Tails. Use this knowledge responsibly and if you found this video useful, let me know in the comments and as always, thanks for watching.